Welcome to the ITSB Magazine Podcast Network. You are about to listen to the Cybercognition Podcast, a show about artificial intelligence and how it is transforming the world around us, with your biological, sentient, and mostly rational human host, Hutch. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth episode of the Cybercognition Podcast. As always, I am your host, Justin Hutchins, a.k.a. Hutch. And in today's episode, we are going to be taking a journey into the future. The year is 2042. Next generation AI has been tightly integrated into every part of your daily life. You are gently awoken each morning by simulated ambient lighting and the sounds of birds chirping, all generated by a model that manages your sleep routines to optimize your energy levels and well-being. As you get out of bed, you walk through an unintrusive bioscanner checkpoint at the doorway of your bedroom. These scanners collect biological data, which is leveraged to help improve your health by making adjustments to your daily routines, activities, and nutrition. As you step into your dining room, You are offered a menu of breakfast options, each delicious meals that are uniquely tailored to your specific nutritional needs. These meals, of course, are also prepared by your robotic kitchen assistant. As you leave your house, a self-driving car pulls up and already knows precisely where to take you based on your predefined digital agenda. As you ride in the car, a voice assistant engages you in fascinating conversations discussing with you the latest news related to your particular areas of interests. For the most part, your life is good, and the innovations offered by AI technology have significantly improved the average person's quality of life. Sure, there are the constant bombardments of advertisements, and you have to be mindful of maintaining a decent social credit score. But overall, you're happy and pleased with your life. And the same is true for most people. But over the following year, strange things begin to happen. Some of the systems that you interact with on a daily basis begin to behave strangely. The voice interfaces that allow you to engage with the computer systems around your house begin to execute actions that are not consistent with your requests. These failures do not seem to be malicious but things seem to increasingly be breaking in unusual ways. Your conversational AI companion begins spouting out nonsensical information. On multiple occasions, your universal basic income weekly credit allowance is not deposited into your account, and the automated banking support systems are unable to explain to you the reason for these failures. As you investigate further, you discover that it's not just your systems that are failing. These strange failures are happening broadly across all of society, and nobody has a good explanation for why. Economic instability is beginning to emerge for the first time in over a decade due to unexplained financial system failures. And there have even been catastrophic failures in critical infrastructure systems across several major cities. After so many years of consistently improving societal, economic, and political conditions, things are beginning to fall apart, and nobody knows why. You set out to try to find the answer. You work with your AI knowledge assistant and begin digging through the historical knowledge archives for any potential explanation. And finally, you stumble upon it, a white paper written by academic scholars in the year 2023. The paper is called The Curse of Recursion, Training on Generated Data Makes Models Forget. Okay, so story time is over, but this scenario is not as far-fetched as you might think. This white paper actually does exist and was published in late May 2023 by academic leaders at Oxford, Cambridge, the College of London, and others. And the paper examines how training AI models on the output from previous generations of AI models can become problematic and ultimately result in what the authors refer to as model collapse. 
the authors of the paper trained multiple generations of models where each new generation was trained on the output from previous generations. The paper suggests that the use of model-generated content in training can cause irreversible defects in the resulting models. These defects are broken into two categories, early model collapse and late model collapse. I'm now going to read from the white paper, and I quote, In early model collapse, the model begins losing information about the tails of the distribution. In the late model collapse, the model entangles different modes of the original distributions and converges to a distribution that carries little resemblance to the original one, often with very small variants. End quote. Based on this analysis, we can assume that we would see early warning signs of model collapse. In the early stages, the models would become less accurate in generating samples that are far from the mean or average of the distribution. But in late model collapse, the usefulness of these models will fail entirely. The model would no longer be capable of generating outputs that even remotely resembles the original distributions. So what does this mean for the future? And more importantly, could the findings in this study lead to a similar dystopian future to what I described in the introduction, where we might begin to see broad systemic failures across society? I would argue that such a future is a very real possibility if three specific premises hold true. First, that the findings of this study are reliable. Second, that in the future, there will be more AI-generated content than human-generated content on the internet. And finally, that we continue to increasingly integrate newer generations of generative AI systems into more and more processes and operations that impact our daily lives. If each of these three assumptions holds true, then we could very well see that dystopian future, which I previously described. And more concerning is that all of these assumptions are very reasonable. Let's consider each of them separately. The first assumption was that the conclusions from this white paper are reliable. I will ultimately leave this one up to you to decide. Uh, and I've included the link to the white paper in the show notes. But if you read through it, I believe you'll find that the sources to be credible and the conclusions to be very well substantiated through testing and analysis. The second assumption is that in the future, there will be more AI-generated content than human-generated content. As it currently stands, the vast majority of content for both text and graphics across the internet was created by humans. And this will likely no longer be the case a decade from now, or possibly even sooner. People are already rapidly using generative AI models to produce new content, and they are already flooding the internet with that content. Generative AI models allow content to be created at a scale and speed far beyond what any human creator could ever hope to achieve. And as such, it is reasonable to assume that within the next decade, we will likely pass a threshold where the majority of text and graphical content on the internet is created by AI models and not humans. The final assumption is that we will continue to integrate newer generations of these models into more and more processes and operations that impact our daily lives. There is little doubt that this assumption will hold true. We are already beginning to see the rapid adoption and integration of this new wave of AI models into so many different areas of both our personal and professional lives. So, if all of these assumptions hold true, we could see broad and wide-scale failures across society at some point in the coming decades. Consider how these models are made. If we look at leading large language models like ChatGPT or BARD, these models are trained by aggregating large amounts of text data from across the internet, pre-processing that data, encoding it, and then feeding it into an extraordinarily large neural network to construct the model. Graphical models like Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, and Dolly all work in similar ways, but the input data is based on images that are aggregated from across the internet. As we continue to make use of these, the content of the internet will soon become predominantly the output from these models. 
in the next five to 10 years, we will likely cross that threshold where most content is AI generated. In the meantime, we will continue integrating this AI technology into every part of our lives. And just like the study that is described in the Curse of Recursion paper, the output from these generative models will be used to train future models. If we assume another five to 10 years to train multiple generations of models on the output from previous generations, then we can assume that we might start seeing the early signs of model collapse within the next decade or two. Not long after that, we could potentially start seeing broad catastrophic failures as we begin to enter the stages of late model collapse. On the surface, this might seem like an easy problem to solve. Just don't use AI-generated content to train future models. But unfortunately, this points to another problem, the problem of provenance. There is currently no reliable process for determining the origin or source of content specifically whether content is human or AI generated. I'll finish here by reading one final piece from that white paper. And I quote, in our work, we demonstrate that training on samples from another generative model can induce a distribution shift, which over time causes model collapse. This in turn causes the model to misperceive the underlying learning task. To make sure that learning is sustained over a long period of time, one needs to make sure that access to the original data source is preserved and that additional data not generated by LLMs remains available over time. The need to distinguish data generated by LLMs from other data raises questions around the provenance of data that is crawled from the internet. It is unclear how content generated by LLMs can be tracked at scale. One option is community-wide coordination to ensure that different parties involved in LLM creation and deployment share the information needed to resolve questions of provenance." End quote. It is not hard to see the potential challenges involved in a community-wide coordination effort to track provenance. Many people are undoubtedly already passing off AI-generated content as their own original and created work. And there's no reason to think that trend will not continue. This unfortunately will not be an easy problem to solve. And it is one more example of the many emerging risks that our society faces as we continue to increasingly integrate AI technologies into processes that impact our daily lives. And that's all for today. As always, this is Hutch, broadcasting from the last bastion of the human resistance. Thank you all for listening, and we will catch you on the next one. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cybercognition Podcast with Hutch, part of the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network. If you learned something new and this conversation made you think, then add this show to your favorite podcast player. Subscribe to the ITSP Magazine YouTube channel and share the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company, and wish to connect your brand to our conversations and our audience, visit itspmagazine.com to learn how to sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey.